What's up, church, and welcome to Battleground Studios. I'm your host, Eric, and today accompanying me is an awesome, awesome man of God. Uh, go ahead and say hello to everybody, Angel. Hi, my name is Angel. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. And he, he, uh, so today, I brought Angel in here for a, a specific reason, and that reason is uh, he's, he's, he's about to start a ministry, and this ministry is going to be awesome, and, and it's really cool to see how God uh, brought him back to a place that he kind of came out of, right? And the, the people that he's going to reach out to is people that he can relate to. And it's so cool how God does this to our lives. Like I always tell people, don't forget your past because it's there for a reason, because you can use that for the future when you're telling people your story, telling people your testimony. So Angel, uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Like where, where, where was you born? How did you like, what kind of environment, like, why'd you grow up? How'd you get here to Bristol? Like, just kind of tell us a little brief story about yourself. Um, so I grew, I grew up in Mexico. Um, I was brought here when I was young. Um, I went to high school and middle school here in America. Um, my parents were both uh, illegal immigrants when they brought, when they brought us over here. Um, we came to Tennessee, actually, um, whenever there was a, something called deferred action, uh, N80 in Arizona where illegal immigrants were being deported. Yep. Um, I was about to be 18 two years, the, like, the following year, so my father was afraid that if I got pulled over by the police, I was going to get sent back to Mexico. Oh, yeah. So he actually sent me out here with my sister. Uh, my sister lived in Morrison, Tennessee at that time. Yeah. And when I did, I started working, you know, once I got out of high school. And because of a job, I work at the Waffles. I got a job promotion, and I was we we're opening up new Waffles up here in Bristol, so I got sent up here to work. Nice. And So... That's interesting. And so, did you did you meet your wife here in Bristol? No. So my wife, I met her in Morristown. She she we worked at the IHOP together. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was destiny. Yeah, she, she was going to <laughs> she was going to school at that time. Um, she was going to Watcher State, and then she needed a job. She got a job as a server at the IHOP, and I was a cook there. So oh, nice, nice. Okay, so with that being said, I. It's so interesting because so did you grow up a Christian or did was your was it say was your wife a Christian? Did you guys meet like how how did that come about? Like did you guys just start coming to church or did she grow up in church? How, so, how exactly? So she she grew up in the church. Um, the pastor that wed us actually was one of her like it was a close family friend that they knew, and he had his own church down in Madisonville, Tennessee, where yeah. she's from, and she's always kind of stuck to her morals and everything that she's been taught in the right. Word of God. Mm -hmm. um, her family, like her cousin and all that, they're all really big into church, so she's always had that support system to lean on. Yeah. Um, I, I went to church at a young age. Um, I grew up going to Catholic church, and when I got into high school, I went to a non-denominational church in Arizona, and I learned about God and all that there. And when I came to Tennessee, my sister's actually a leader at a Pentecostal church. Okay. Um, she she kept on taking me to church and stuff like that. But when I got old enough to just not really have to go, I kind of started doing my own thing and walked away from God. Yeah. Um, when me and her married, I feel like, you know, I always tell people, I feel like I lied to her because when she brought up the whole concept of God and yeah. marriage, I just agree with it because I did <laughs> believe all of it, but yeah. it doesn't mean that I was a good Christian man following what the Bible says. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's not like I didn't yeah. believe what they were saying. I believed in all that, but you know, when you get out in the world and your foundation isn't set the right way in God, you you turn away from it and you, it's not that you don't believe it, but you just don't apply it to you. You're kind of, right. you just go through the motions of coming to church and being in church, but it's literally meaningless. There's nothing, there's yeah. no, you just, you're better off going out to the club the night before than there's coming to church because you're literally not getting anything from it. There's no it. fulfillment. Right. And man, it's, it's, it's so good. <laughs> Man, so this is good that you, I'm glad you said that because I never necessarily heard you you tell that side of the story because now, okay, when I see you and Emily, when I see you guys uh, serving the Lord and when I see you guys as a, as a couple, I don't see that angel anymore. Like, I don't, I don't see the angel you just described. I see the angel that, you know, is there for his wife, who's there for his kids, who's always, who's not just showing up because she wants you to show up, but you're coming because you want to come too, right? Yeah. And, and you guys have made... Uh, church a part of your family which right. is awesome like the church it is your family in a sense right <laughs> yeah well that's something new to us like as far as like I'm learning to be the godly man so that I could right. be my family but you know we when first came to real life the reason I came here was Emily had brought me here about two years ago 
And I just thought it was ridiculous. I'm like, I ain't going there. I'm like, people are ridiculous. The music is terrible. It's loud. <laughs> and it's one of those things I didn't want to be here. You know, whenever you don't want to do something, you find, you know, oh, somebody yeah. breathing too loud is upsetting you. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of That's those true. things that um, she, she ended up getting upset and was going to file for divorce because oh, wow. um, I was just a terrible person as far as like, in the world size, I was a good man because I worked and I provided for her and mm -hmm. she was able to stay at home with the kids. But any time I got a chance to tear her down, that's what I did. Yeah. But she didn't necessarily care about that. But what bothered her the most is that I started making a mockery of her religion and God. Oh, okay. Every time yeah. she wanted yeah. to come to church, it was always like, you know, like, oh, there are a bunch of fake people there. Everybody yeah, there yeah. doesn't care. You know what I mean? Man. And just like drug God and, you know, something that now I get convicted as a Christian, you know, it's like, I took God's name in vain and pretty much said that he wasn't real because it was to please me and to get my point across because I figured if we did what I wanted to, you know what I mean, it was going to be better. Yeah. But that's something that she was really determined that she wasn't going to change. You know, she did love me and she cared for me. Right. But she says that she was not going to, you know, God, she, her exact words is God didn't call me to be a martyr and to sit here. He's like, God right. called me to stand my ground and believe in my faith. Yeah. So she decided to grab her stuff and she was leaving with her mom. We were actually not living together for about two months. Oh, wow, yeah. And um, in those two months, my brother, he's a youth leader down in uh, Morristown. He, he goes to mm -hmm. a church down there. And he always invited me to church, and I always went, but it was more of a courteous thing, you know. I didn't, right, right. But um, when he didn't even know about it after like a month later because he called my wife to ask her something. He goes, oh, me and your brother are split up at this moment. We're not really talking. Yeah. And they apparently prayed for each other. That she, He prayed for them. Yeah. So my brother called me. And he told me, hey, you know, I heard that you're going through this. We're going to be praying for you. And I know something that he always tells me that his feelings were hurt because he told, I told him that he was stupid and that his God was stupid and I needed any help from either one <laughs> Man, of them. yeah, yeah. And we ended up going, Shoot. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up going down to Morristown yeah. and um, we, I ended up going down there to spend the, I think one of my nephews had a track meet or something. Mm -hmm. So I went and spent a weekend with them and they just happened to have I me, mean, their whole life about all being in church. Yeah. So we had one of the preachers there. She met me actually when I was uh, working at the IHOP when I was 16 years old. And she used to always try to get me to come to the church, and I never did went. Yeah. So when she seen me there, she was like, oh, I remember you. It's like you used to be our server at the IHOP. Oh. And I'm like, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> so then they ended up talking, you know, they gave a message about forgiveness and, you know, not just like how God forgives you, but how you should forgive the mistakes you made and how God right. turns you into a new creation when you yeah. become and we said the the repentance prayer mm -hmm. and i was sitting in the back and i was sitting there and then i said the prayer and then she invited people she's all like she's like who here has who, who said that and meant that for the first time yeah and i didn't you know i said the prayer and i did mean the repentance but i wasn't one of the ones that raised my hand i wasn't mm -hmm. that brave well this pastor she walked down there and she's all like god told me to come up here she's all like, i can pray for you again because you said that prayer and i know your heart is true and it's hurting Wow. Like, but till you humble yourself for God, He's not gonna change anything. Oh, I'm getting teary. I just think, no, you no, know, nah, that's good. That gives me chills. Uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's one of that's the first time that I felt like I had that connection with God. Yeah. And you know, I went up to the altar and they prayed over for me. And where I lived in Bristol, she said that she didn't care where I went to church, but I needed to stay connected with God. Yeah. So I ended up coming. I seen a lot of cars on Wednesday, and like I said, I was home alone, so I was just like, oh, there's a bunch of cars at the church. Let me go check out what's going on. Yeah. So I came in. That's actually CR, and Ed was there. Yeah. Um, so Ed used to help out with CR, so he was sat there, and he prayed for me, and he gave me his, he got my information, and mm -hmm. then the next week he texted me about service, going, hey, we're going to have service, you know, do you want to come? And that's how I just started getting clicked in with um with CR. So when I came here, Holly was one of those people that was a CR. Yeah. And she was asking for volunteers for the Levi ministry. Yeah. And I was like, you know, like I used to, I was just really down on myself and I'm like, well, I don't even really deserve to be cleaning the bathrooms for anybody, but if, yeah. if that's what there's to do, I'll do right. it. Man, man. So that's, <laughs> man, no, that's, that's a good, that's good. And it's so crazy how, you know, you talked about you were mocking God and you were mocking everybody who even talked about it. And it's like, man, but it, it just shows you the faithfulness of God. Like, even though when we're unfaithful and we're, we're turning our backs on God and we're doing all these, these shameful things towards him, he still shows us mercy and grace. And it's so cool how you said that because I don't see that now. Like, I don't see that person at all. 
I don't see the person who like every time I see you, you know, you're respectful to your wife. You can tell that it's not nothing fake, that you love each other dearly. You know, you love your kids and like it, it's obvious and it's so cool to see how from you telling me that how the Lord has just completely transformed you. Yeah. And so would you say that, you know, from that and, and seeing how God's worked in your life, do you do other people see that as well? Because you tell me that, like, I don't, I, I haven't seen that angel. I yeah. see the angel that jokes around and does things, but I've never seen you. Uh, I don't know the angel that you just described a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, even at work, so um, I have a few managers I used to work with a year back where I'm a district manager. I have managers that work under me. Yeah. And we have uh, one lady that whenever she heard I was going to be her boss again, like, in October, she thought about quitting because she said that I was just the biggest a-hole she knew. Oh, wow. And it was one of those things that even at work, God's changed my relationships with people because I used to think of work as a... I always used to look at it as like, what can I get out of these people so that I look better? Right, yeah, yeah. As in for now... As um, in, in it for yourself and not right. anybody else. Yeah. And as in for now, even the way I think about managing and just the way I treat people, I think about like, what can I do so that God... So I could show God in me so that these people may come to God. And a lot of it is just, you know, God, you know, teaches us to be, you know, kind to people to Absolutely. actually genuinely care about their problems, you know, because I used to be that boss. I used to be like, oh, what's wrong? But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, what can I tell these people so just like get get, get out? And, yeah. yeah. As in, you know, one of the things I do now is I ask my people, do, does anybody need me to pray for them? Does yeah. anybody, you know, and I've had a couple of people reach out to me, you know, like in private and be like, can you pray for my family? Can you yeah. pray for my kids? And that's something that, you know what I mean, I've always taken seriously. So now I, I try to yeah. pray for everybody right. and I try to, just myself, I try to remember how I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I used to tell myself whenever I was younger is I'm not going to be my dad because my dad was, I mean, he had a real bad temper. If he was yeah. upset, the whole world knew he was upset and he didn't care who he had to kick over just so he got <laughs> his point across. Yeah. And I was becoming that person, you know. So did it, were you saying that did anybody ever try to... Uh... Which I know you said the people at the work, you know, they want to work for you, things like that. But there's any, is there anybody in your personal life who had a hard time accepting that you've changed? Like maybe even now, like they have a hard time understanding that you're not the person that you used to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like my older brother and sister, they, they're still not believers in God. So mm -hmm. my other brother, uh, my other sister are. So whenever I talk to them, you know, they they understand and they seem to change in me yeah. because. You know, like I said before, I was, like, invited to family functions as just a, a courtesy thing. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, like, they're calling me to try to put things together with them <laughs> and do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my other, my older brothers and sisters, they they still, whenever I talk to them, they just tell me that I'm just speaking a bunch of, he, 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 they call it hippie crap. They're, yeah, like, yeah. They're like, they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot you're, you're, you're one of them now and yeah, all stuff like yeah. that. And, that. And that's tough. But the reason I ask that is because, so my oldest son, which you know, you know, yeah. he, um, he got he had this little spell in his life and he's only 13 but he went through this meeting different friends and being around different people and he would he would do things to try to fit in or he would do things that would get him in trouble and, and you know he'd get in a lot of trouble and man i would just be so frustrated because i know i know him and i knew deep down inside he's a good kid yeah and he and i've always said that i'm like this kid's got a big heart but he was getting in trouble and he was doing these things on his own you know i'm not giving him no kind of no kind of uh, innocence because he was doing it. Like, it wasn't yeah. nobody else. It was him. And now, you know, he, uh, the Lord, you know, we I prayed with him every night. Whenever he was feeling certain kind of feelings, you know, I, I'd pray with him. I'd, I'd always check on him. I mean, I'd, ch I'd check everything. And he would, uh, but now, you know, the Lord's really working on him. And he, he's, he's, he's wanting to know about God. He's wanting to learn all these things. And as he's changing, you know, he, he stopped talking to certain kids. He's, he, he separated himself from certain songs and music and certain certain movies and things like that. And, and as he's changing and becoming a better kid, people who used to get in trouble with, it's like they don't understand it. It's like they're still fussing at him for stuff that he used to do, but he's not that kid anymore. So they'll yeah. fuss at him for certain things, and he's like, he's like, you know, Dad, I don't understand why they're treating me like that. He's like, I'm not the kid that I used to be, but they're still treating me like I am. And I said, son, that's because they've not adapted to your change. I said, don't you change the way that you're being, I said, because you're doing amazing. And I said, so for you to do that, I said, you got to understand that they, they're not adapting to your change. I said, so you just got to show them. I said, it don't matter what they say. I said, you keep showing them. 
And so for you to do that, man, I said, it, it's so cool to see how, especially after you just described that, how the Lord's just worked in you and worked yeah. in you so much that your family sees it. Your wife is, he's restores your marriage. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause like you said, you were, you were separated for what, two months? Yeah. Not living. Yeah. And man, and that, and I know for me, just being away from my wife for a few days, I'm like, it drives me crazy, you yeah. know? And, and so that, that's a big deal. But, uh, but with that, I want to talk real quick about, uh, what the Lord's doing in your life right now. And so you just came to me, uh, I guess it was a couple of months ago and you had mentioned a, a, a Spanish ministry. Yeah. And, uh, at first I'm like, you know, this is super cool, but I didn't really know how that we would get it, you know, how to do all these things. Cause you know, in some churches they have like, the uh, interpreters and they have like certain earpieces, but we couldn't afford stuff like that. So we got together and talked and it's like, well, let's just start a Bible study, yeah. you know? So you want, you're going to start a Bible study and, you know, just kind of see where this takes off. So kind of tell us a little bit about that. Like, what is this, uh, Hispanic ministry and like, what's your heart behind it? Is it something that you just, you know, just, uh, just thought about one day or is it something that you really prayed about and feel like the Lord has put it on your heart? Um, well, the thing about me, I'm not really like one of those go-getter people, you know, like, um, I think it's God because it's one of those things that I read the purpose driven life. When I first started, like I said, I was cleaning the, the bathroom and helping out with the Levi ministry. Yeah. And it was one of those things that like, I've always been successful with work. I've always been one of those people. My parents, you know, if they didn't teach me anything, they taught me work ethic. Yeah. So I'm one of those people. I never left work till the job was done. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things that before I really felt the love of Christ or felt any of that, um, you know what I mean? Like, I always work hard. So it was one of those things that I got promoted wherever I went to work. Right. And God... Now that I'm, you know, a believer, I know that was a blessing God gave me. Absolutely. He, and, was, he was already paving your path before you yeah. even knew it because he knew that you was going to, you know, come to him. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things that he, you know, I've been blessed with that. But it's one of those things that it's everything I like, felt just meaningless. Like it was a bother. Like even my job, I was like, what's the point of me going and dealing with these people or having to, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just like always a bother. And um, when I started doing, like first I started helping out with the Levi ministry. Then I got involved with the Rush Kids. And like you say, you know, your your son is one of those people that I've seen he's changed in the last year, you know yeah. what I mean? And what God's done with him, you know, he, you know, I mean, I don't know how it was before, you know, but I, you know, I, he reminded me a lot of myself, where it's just like, you, what we wanted to do was right, but then the enemy attacked and we yeah, just yeah. couldn't that's help. Yeah, exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't help but do what was wrong because yeah. we hadn't set that foundation yet to be able, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's lucky he has a father like you to be able to turn to as a believer that prays yeah, with well, him. Thank you. But, um... You know, I didn't have that at home. My parents, my dad was like, get out of here, don't talk to me. Right. And a lot of Hispanics, I feel, grow up with that environment. Even when they go to church, our parents don't, they're not really, they're more worried about their internal issues. And, you know, we, we sh mm. parents that are normally immigrants, you don't have to worry about getting deported. They right, have right. to worry about... A different kind of stress. Right. Like, I mean, there's people that literally I've ran into that are driving from Marion all the way to the Tennessee side just to get their check cash because, you know... Because of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of struggles. And just being in this country is something that is a whole, you know what I mean? They literally have to die, lie about their identity, have to lie about all this stuff. Yeah. And then I just know as a Christian man having to, you know, if I had to lie about who I am every single day and try to be a Christian, I don't mm -hmm. know if I could be the Christian I am. Right. It's exhausting. Right. And then <laughs> um, one of the things, the more I read the Bible, you know, I read the book of Ersa. Um, and then one of the things that I got from it was, you know, like they had to migrate to go back and rebuild right after the Babylonian right. Empire fell down. And, and Ezra? The, yeah, right. Ezra. And then, um, so it just reminded me, and it kind of got put it in my heart when I was reading this, you know, like we as we, we set the limitations of where God's going to work with us. Amen. You know what I mean? And it's Amen. not just Hispanics. It's like Americans, everybody in general. We decide how far God's going to go and Absolutely. use us. But whenever I run into a lot of people that like are in Hispanic church and they've been in ministry, it's like they talk about God's wrath and condemnation and mm -hmm. they talk about obedience. But a lot of churches they leave out the uh, God's love. Right. And I, you know, and when we it, learn, it's strange. That's right, though, because it's it's usually it's so crazy. But it's a lot of time, not every time, but it's it's one or the other. Right. You know. But and that's what I like about our church. I love the fact that we speak about being broken and being able. You know, we. We're genuine. It's something that we're not here for show. Yeah. You know, like, whenever I have problems, I reached out to you and, like, Jason, you know what I mean? Yeah. And before at other churches, I've never felt comfortable or I've never, you know, been a nobody really opens up that to be able to be vulnerable and be able to yeah, be like, yeah. I'm struggling with this. So God just laid it in my heart, you know, that there, 
I used to, I went to a church one time called the Great Commission, and mm -hmm. they had a multilingual um, Spanish ministry. Yeah. And it was really good. And I was like, you know, like, why are we not reaching, the, you know, the, the Bristol population is growing with Hispanics just right. since I've been here the last three years. And I'm just like, you know, there's these people that we're not reaching out to, mm -hmm. and there's not really a lot of places that are offering what we bring to, you know, to what we bring the love of God. You know, there's other churches around here that do have a Spanish ministry, yep. and I've like kind of gone and visited some of them. But it's something that I wanna, I wanna bring the real life experience to those people because just like there's Americans that are broken to sleep through the cracks, and that's yep. what I feel like our church kind of brings in. Yeah, there's a lot of Hispanics the same way where. Um, I have a guy I ran into, he's an alcoholic, he drinks every day, but he came up here to work when he was a young, he was 19 years old, he's been here for 10 years. His whole money that he was sending, he was sending to his girlfriend down in Mexico yeah. so they could get married and build a house. Well, you know, girlfriend then cheated on him, spent the money, and yeah. she shacked up with somebody else. Man. You know, and those are things that we never have to worry about. You know, I don't worry about some of that. Well, you know, I have an American, you know, I'm not an American citizen, but I'm here legally now, so those are not things that ever crossed my mind yeah and i'm like how many are we you know and i'm like i thought about it and god just laid it in my heart about like you know there's broken people there that only you could communicate with that absolutely. only you can touch absolutely you know and like i said my father was one of those people that he found god at the very end of his life mm -hmm. and that's something that you know god just laid upon me you know like you don't want to be like your father but you're not willing to work for me right now that you're young you're Amen. gonna wait till uh, you're old and ready yeah. to die to turn your life to me and, and man that that's a dangerous line to, to go down but it, it's so cool how i love it because you know you saying that and i, I hope this is an eye opener for people watching but in america you know especially the past few years like we've hit this line of racism's always been there you know what I mean? Like, it's always there at some point. But it's like, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of how you feel about someone, like, they're human. Right. You know, and they have a soul. And regardless of what, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should break the laws and do all these crazy things. But regardless of what the law says here on earth or what, what, what this person says about this person, like, that person has a soul. And when they die, they're going to be faced with a decision of whether they're going to heaven or hell. And, and so it's so I'm 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 glad you brought that up because like you, you you're showing love to that guy. Yeah. You know because you know he, he thinks he's building this relationship with this woman and, and uh, he thinks that he's going to build this happy life and then she she you know does that and it just destroys him. Right. And, you know and I'm sure that you know he, that's something that he just ponders on and thinks like what have I done? I'm sure he like beat himself up. Yeah. And, and like you said, I'm sure there's multiple people facing situations like that. Like, you know, kids. I know when I went to Mexico one time, there's a lot of kids during the summer. They, you know, they may stay with their aunt or somebody like that. But they would also, um, they would work for their family. Yeah. And they would send their mother money. Because right. where I was at, it was very, like, it was very, like, a lot, a bit, like, poverty. Bad. Right. Bad, bad. And, man, these kids would just do these things and try to help out their family. And it's like, man, imagine what kind of stress you're under. And, and, you know, you've told me similar stories like this, but what kind of stress you're under as a kid when you feel like you've got to be the one that takes care of your family? Right. You know, and, and that's not your responsibility as a teenager. Well, but sometimes we get we get put in those situations. Well, that and, like, the Hispanic population, I mean, we have a lot of young adults that are my age yeah. that I will think benefit from our church because if they start coming, they will like to bring their parents, but if we don't have something for their parents where their parents don't speak yes. English, they won't come here, you know what yeah. I mean? And you have a lot of those that, you know, I think both ministries will grow from it because you're going to have a young Hispanic men that are going to be bilingual like me. Right, yeah. That are, you know what I mean, having to help take care of their parents. Um, the one thing about it, too, is, like, Hispanic people, they're very, like, they're very, they're a very close-knit community. Yep. Yep. So if one or two start coming, then before it's done and over with, um, my brother's church, over half of their congregation started with the deacon that, that's there now. Mm -hmm. He got baptized, and him and his wife, and he brought his brother, then that one brought his sister. And, then <laughs> like, and you know, yeah. before it's all <laughs> wow. over with, they got about wow. 40 people that congregate, and it's one big family. Yeah, that's that, awesome. And, and, and I love stuff like that because it, it brings us all together. Because yeah. at the end of the day, and that's another thing I like about our church you were talking about, you know, we really, we really talk, and, and our pastor talks about this a lot, Joel, how, you know, it's not about black or white or Asian or Hispanic. It's like 
God created us how we're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, when we start creating these barriers, like that's where we kind of like, okay, God, we got it covered. You just, you just do whatever right. we got this. But it's like, no, like God created us all specifically for a per, like a, a purpose, a certain reason. Right. And, and it, it's so good. I, I love what you're like, the ministry that the Lord has put you, like put this vision that he's put in your heart because it, it, it's breaking those barriers that the world's trying to put on us, especially in America. Like right now, uh, you know, everybody's trying to push the racism and push, yeah. you know, we got, but it's like, no, no, like we're humans just because right. our skin look like we're still human. We yeah. eat, we drink, we conversate. <laughs> well, not only that, I feel as Christians, and that's something that God laid on my heart. Like when I grew up, I, I try to pretend like I wasn't Hispanic or Mexican because I would get picked on a lot in school. Yeah, I got yeah. bullied a lot just I because I, I spoke with an accent yeah. or anything. I didn't get picked on by necessarily uh, white kids or American kids. I got picked on by the Hispanic kids that yeah. were born here that <laughs> yeah. were like, oh, yeah, I'm you're Mexican or I'm Hispanic too, but, you know, I was born here. I don't speak like you. You know, yeah. they would say a lot of them would call me wet bags and stuff like that. Oh, man, yeah. And it's stuff that, you know, like, I, will, I was ashamed of my culture, and when I came to Christ, you know, I'm no longer ashamed of that. It's something that God put in my heart. Like, you know, I, I made you this way so that you could help other That's people right. just like you, you know what yeah. I mean? Because we get so caught up in, and it's just the way humans are, you know, we yeah, turn away absolutely. from God when we're born. We get so caught up in our hurt and our pain, we forget about the pain others are experiencing, you know, yeah, and absolutely. sometimes we're the ones passing that pain along. Absolutely. And it's something that God just put in my heart, you know, reach those people that are hurting like you, those people that are, you know, criticized or turned down or looked upon just because, you know, of their situations and their circumstances. Yeah. And that's the one thing, you know, when we read the Old Testament, God gives the Israelites all those promises, you know. Yeah. He's a God of promises and a God of fulfillment. He just doesn't yeah. make empty promises. Every promise will be fulfilled. Man, absolutely. And Isaiah talks about this. Man, I'm so it gives me chills when you said that. But he says, you know, that, that when the Lord's word goes out, I'm pretty sure it's in Isaiah. But when the Lord's word goes out, it's not going to come back in vain. Like when the Lord speaks right. it out, it's going to be complete. Right. And, uh, and, and, and it goes right with what you said, man, because from what just just from this little bit that you're telling me right now, it's like the Lord has always worked on you, like for this a time such as this. Mm -hmm. It's like the things that you've been through, the struggles with your marriage, the struggle with your life, the struggle with all that you went through up until this point. God is going to use it for your ministry, right? Yeah. He's going to use all that for you to be a leader in your ministry, man. And it's so cool to just to see how God has done that, just from you telling me these, like what you've told us here today. Yeah. But that's super cool. And so, so with your ministry, what uh. What's some things as a church, right? What's some things as a church or as other believers out there, in case you don't go to church here and you're seeing this, like what's some ways that we can get behind this and support you? Um, I, first thing I think is prayer. I think Absolutely. prayer is the, the biggest thing. Yeah. The other thing is if you all know anybody that's Hispanic, you work with somebody maybe that you're not comfortable talking to because they don't speak a lot of English. Yeah. You know, um, Hispanic people normally, if somebody talks to them, they, they're not going to respond rudely or anything. They're, they're very, I mean, we're, we're more well mannered than what like, the American culture is as yeah, far as yeah. as part of that. So even if even if you like you know if I give you all flyers and hand them out at work for people that work out yeah. there, you know what I mean? They're they're not gonna be like here and throw it back at you. You know, most right. of them, even if they look at it and glimpse of it, you know they might not come or you know it might just plant that seed. You never know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So so prayer, yeah, I think that's a that's a super big one. But okay, which is awesome. So what about if let's just say let's say me, I'm not Hispanic, but I want to help you out in some way and you know maybe maybe it's not past let's say let's say i want to come to your bible study and i want to like just help you out in some way or maybe i want to get involved in your ministry and but i don't know spanish or you know maybe i can start to learn but like what's some ways that someone could you think could get plugged in with helping you okay so the one thing i did look is um there's actually somebody on youtube that has the Bible verses in Spanish and English. Oh, yeah. And they go down and you're reading them. And it's actually supposed to teach you how to read your Bible in Spanish. Nice. So if you're one of those people that want to come along and just see what it's about, yeah. you know, the verses are right there. And they're in Spanish and English, like side by side. Yeah. And it actually highlights the words and how they're translated. Yeah. So that way, you know, you learn a little bit of the language and you're still, you know what I mean, yeah. able to learn the Word of God, which is the best part about and it. And I think that's so cool because, you know, Regardless of our race and what we look like, every every place has a certain culture, right? right. And so that the Hispanic culture is going to mix with you know the American culture. Yeah. So like it's super super cool even talking about that because I just pictured in my mind like you know these different cultures 
but because of Jesus, we're coming together as one. Right. You know, and and that's super cool. So prayer and and just getting in the 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 word and, and learn a little bit of Spanish yeah. and and that's cool, man. Like. It's so good, and I, I hope people jump on board behind me and support this because it's definitely one of those things that, like, we shouldn't overlook. And it's a way that the Lord's put it on your heart to reach other people outside of people that look like you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, or me and you. Like, people that look different than what you're used to seeing in general. So, man, I think that's super cool, and it's amazing. And, man, I can't wait to see what the Lord does. And next time we bring you back on, like, I'm excited to hear what the Lord does through it. <laughs> But uh, with that being said, man, so what, what days uh, right now, and if you don't have the answer to it, that's fine. But as of right now, when when do you plan on uh, starting your, your Bible study and meeting and, you know, getting to know these people? So we plan on tomorrow will be our first day. Um, we've had flyers made and passed them out all over Bristol. Um, and we plan on doing it every Monday after that. It'll okay. be uh, 6, 6.30, depending on what time people get gotcha, there. Gotcha. Um, we did it in the afternoon so that way people could get from work. You know, if they have kids, they have somewhere to drop them off. Or if you have kids and you want to bring them, you can bring them with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure something out. We'll... Yeah. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll put my wife to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, all you wives out there. <laughs> but, uh, but that's awesome, man. So we got that information. Prayer. Uh, helping you just get involved and pass out these flyers. And really, uh, if I could say, I think another good thing for people to do is once you once you get to meeting these people and you develop a relationship, just coming and meeting them. Right. You know, meeting them and understanding like, hey, we have all these cultural differences, but we still know one thing. We love Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> we well, love the Lord and it, what he's yeah, done Yeah, when you us. said that, you know, like when uh, Joel, when he took us to the Global Awakening, yeah. where they had the 33 different African, was it called, oh, countries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of like a vision that I want to have, you know, because Latin America is just as big as, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? But absolutely. not just Latin America, North America, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's one of the things that... Um, you know, it's just about keeping an open mind. And like you said, you know, we're all unified through the blood of Christ. Yes, sir. You know, so it does, like, you know, we say, we as humans set boundaries and borders and stuff yep. like that. And like I said, we limit, we try to put God in a little bottle and think that that's what we're limited like to. Like he's a genie. Right. Uh -huh. And we try, I, I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. It doesn't matter what color you are. You know, we, yes, sir. if we don't set limitations for God, God will open the gates of heaven and bring us all those promises yeah, that we're made. Chills again, man. You know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's just what I want to get across through, through through that ministry. You know what I mean? That, you know, like, well, there's pastors that when I tell them, oh, you know, well, like, this so-and-so, they go in, they're doing missionary work, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's for them, not for us. Oh, yeah. And it's for everybody. You know all what right. I mean? What God calls you to do, it doesn't matter what it is, where you come from. Your yeah. calling is for you to answer. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I kind of got on wanting to do this was because I actually was in prayer, and then whenever I got off of prayer, I had a dream, you know, where, like, God was asking me, like, I had died, and he asked me whenever I was dead, like, you know, where is the Spanish ministry I put in your heart to start? Oh, man. And, you know, and I tried to give yeah. him an excuse, and then he goes, well, I didn't put it in their hearts. It was put on hey, like, your yeah, heart that's right. Do. That's right. You know what I mean? And then, like, yeah. he just kind of, like, gave me a, it just kind of opened my mind to, yeah. I can't limit God just because I don't feel yes, like sir. I'm adequate enough or smart enough or, you know, because the enemy is going to attack you with self-doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that I struggle with is sometimes it's not, not necessarily not believing, but the self-doubt that I'm like, well, yeah, they could do it, but that's not what God's Not, me, not God. me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, people ask me all the time. One of our youth members asked me who my favorite prophet was, and I told him that he was... Jeremiah and they kind of laughed like, "Oh, the weeping prophet is yours." And I'm like, "Yeah," because he was full of self doubt. Yeah. And God still used him in great ways. Anyway. And yeah. I'm like, and that's something that I relate to. You know, it's something that I struggle with a lot that I still have to pray about. Whenever I'm told to do something, I doubt whether I'm the one to do it or yeah. whether I'm doing anything right. You know what I mean? And that's I mean, we share with that. We yeah. share in that struggle for sure. But that's the enemy trying to keep everybody down. So absolutely. And so with that being said, and I actually had it open in my Bible right here, <laughs> and I'm I'm so glad you said it. But Jesus tells us, you know, right before uh, the last, one of the last things he says to his disciples at the end of the Gospels before he ascended. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Talk, Jesus talking. Right. And he says, therefore, go, talking to his disciples, as in us, as believers, right? He says, go, make disciples of all nations, all nations, right? That yeah. cultural, they're bringing them together, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey my commands. And he says that I will be with you all the days of your life. So, man, I'm so glad that you shared that with us. I'm glad 
that you know you're obedient to the lord man I, and I, I encourage you I, for, as your brother in christ i'm proud of you man i think it's awesome but i encourage you man just keep fighting for like fighting and going moving forward in the lord and man i think that he's going to bless this and, and i no, i don't think like i believe he's going to bless this because of your obedience and he put it on your heart and, and i see a lot of life change from it man i, I want you to, to know that i fully support you, <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> so you. that's awesome but that's all we got for today guys uh, i hope you enjoyed it so Go check out Angel's Ministry. If you want to get involved, please contact him. Uh, you guys have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.